If you're a service provider in a highly saturated market, you are going to want to tune into today's video to learn how you can crush your competition, even when you're feeling the crunch from them. Hey guys, I'm Christina Sclera from The Contract Shop, and I deal with a lot of saturated professions, and in particular, I like to help people learn how to stand out in those saturated professions. If you know my story, you know that I started out as an attorney, which is an incredibly saturated profession. Just to give you an idea, there's over 40,000 people that are graduating and become lawyers every single year. That's a lot of competition. To put that into perspective, that's compared to about 12,000 new calligraphers every year, maybe maybe crunching into 20,000 new photographers every year. So there's a lot of competition out there, especially in the area where I got started and I was able to stand out. If you wanna learn more about my story, you can definitely do that at the contract shop. But today I'm talking all about how I actually did that. So if you are starting a service-based business, it's one of the most exciting times of your life. Not only is it exciting, but it's a little bit intimidating as well. I hope that no matter what, you're able to enjoy this time because you never get it back. And that's one of the most fun memories that I have of my life is when I started my business. So even though it felt intimidating and scary, it also felt really exciting. And I wanna encourage you to lean into that excitement as much as you can and follow that excitement because it's what's going to launch your business and get it to take off. As you get started, you might be wondering if you're offering the right services or the right packages for your clients. And if that's the case, then this is definitely something that's going to help you today because it can feel really intimidating to know whether or not you're making the right decisions for your business. And especially in the beginning, it can feel like there's so much hinging on it because your time and your money, your resources, they're so limited. And so hopefully you'll find some clarity before the end of today. Because the truth is there's lots of room for you. And when people used to tell me this, I felt like punching them in the face. I know that's not very nice, but I really did. I didn't believe them when they told me that I was special, that I had some kind of unique background or talent. I was like, yeah, okay, well, what is it? And the truth is that you are very different from your competition and only you are going to be able to identify how that is. What that means is that you can actually go to people that are competing against you. You can find that through Google or Facebook groups and you can see what they're offering and learn about how they're offering their services. One of the things that I did to start my company was I looked at what else was out there and I asked, how could this be easier? What could I do to make this more fun and entertaining and exciting for people? And so that was how I came up with the contract shop is I looked at what else was out there as an option and it was all really scary and technical and I said, let me make this easier. So you might not make things easier, you might make things prettier, you might make things faster. Whatever it is, you can lean into one of those superlatives as your own strength. This unique strength is something called your UVP or unique value proposition, sometimes also called your USP, your unique sales proposition. And what this does is it shows your audience how you are different. It also shows your audience how your business stands out. So here's some examples of how you might do that. I like to overlap different areas of my life. So when I first got started, my first business, well, my first business was actually trying to breed horses and then the mare didn't, yeah. Anyway, we're not gonna go into that. But my next business was a venture into teaching private yoga particularly for equestrians because it was a population that I knew really well and I was getting more and more into yoga. So I thought it was a natural overlap and there was nobody really at the time that was teaching equestrian private yoga. That business didn't quite take off, not because equestrian yoga is a bad idea, but because I really like the business side of things more than I like teaching yoga, <laughs> if you can't tell. But that means that you can look at different things in your life. You have different things going on that are gonna make you appealing to a certain group or population that your competition will have no skin in the game. So for example, if you like anime, lean into that. I'm a total nerd and I love Reddit, so I lean into that on my social media and in my mastermind groups because it just is such a big part of who I am. So use those little things, those little quirks, those little hobbies and things that you enjoy in your life to help define who you are. Talk about those things on Instagram and in Facebook groups to connect with people that are like-minded. It could even be things that you're interested in supporting. So for example, if you donate a portion of your proceeds or your, a portion of your profits to a local animal rescue, 
there are going to be certain people that are supportive of that animal rescue as well. And they're going to also want to hire you because you're supportive like they are. A lot of people won't donate. They'll just hire people that do support the causes that they believe in. So it's a really good idea to align yourself with your interests, your hobbies, your causes, and not just to align them, but to share and tell people about it online. Gone are the days where it's unprofessional to share personal details like this. It is imperative. You have to do it these days and share a portion of who you are. Now, this is really good news for you introverts out there because it means you don't have to share quite so much of your personal life. You don't have to share who your partner or spouse is. You don't have to share what you ate for breakfast. You don't have to share what gym you go to. That was kind of like the old school influencer way of doing things. The new school influencer way of doing things is about sharing like-minded interests with your audience whatever that looks like to you, whether that's on Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram, because people are really actually only interested in themselves. And so what you ate for breakfast doesn't really concern them unless you're like a diet coach and you're probably not. So they don't really care about that. But some people definitely will care about the things that are important to you. So you wanna make sure you talk about those frequently. If you're still struggling with ways that you can stand out with your competition, make sure that you ask yourself, what makes me different? Maybe it's something about you as a person or the way that you provide your services. Maybe you make it really easy to work with you. You have an online booking system or something. Brainstorm right now. What makes your business unique and how can you make that clear to your clients? Do you need to change the messaging on your website? Do you need to talk about it more on social media? Do you need to actually show before and after pictures? Those are really effective. So ask yourself, how can I really emphasize the fact that I do something different than my competition and everybody should know that I do things a little bit differently and here's why it's better. It doesn't matter that there's other people in your industry that are doing this as well because the way that you do it will inherently be a little bit different. So trust that that small difference is what's going to make a big difference in your acquiring more clients. If you're transparent with your audience and you share what you're interested in and the causes that you support, you can find the things that connect you and you can capture those clients through your shared backgrounds as well as through your different processes. So if, for example, you do something a little bit differently, you make it more easy for people to get a certain result, whether that's through an online booking process or you promise results within 48 hours, whatever it is that makes you stand out, the biggest thing is that you need to be talking about it. And if you're not sure what it is yet, then talk about all the things that you think help you to stand out and your audience will naturally gravitate towards one of those things above anything else. And that's the one that you can share out the most from then on. If you still aren't sure what your unique value proposition is, that's going to help you stand out from the crowd make sure that you go to thecontractshop.com forward slash clients where I am giving you a course that we used to sell for $300. We had about 50 people go through that and they had great results. With everything that's gone on this year, I've decided to give this away for free just because it feels really good to help everybody as they're moving towards an online economy. So if you want to learn more about what makes you stand out and go through my exercises, my proprietary exercises that help you to identify these things, make sure you go to thecontractshop.com forward slash clients and you get that proprietary clients on tap system. It's free, but I'm not sure how long we're going to be doing this for. That's not like me being a marketer and being like, oh, it's only limited. No, it's, it's actually like we're not sure how long we're going to do this for. We're just trying to provide some relief in the harsh climate of 2020 and beyond. As always, if you like this video, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like this video. Leave a little comment. Tell us what you liked about it. That helps us out tremendously. We're really, really interested in hearing what you liked so that we can create more of that content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.